Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I'm going to start having some of these comments carved on plaques put up in the studio to save me the uh, rigmarole of repeating them and save you the rigmarole of hearing them again and again and again. But if you never support any strikes at all, you are stupid. If you support every single strike that ever occurs, you are equally, if not even more, stupid. Let's get that in there early as a, as a caveat. And then we will pile into our discussion about the junior doctor's latest roll of the dice that they hope will prevent them being forced to work in conditions they believe almost to a man and woman will make you and me and our children and parents less safe. On a lighter note, later in the programme, why brown shoes could be holding back your career. I knew about this, actually. Uh, this uh, sort of class and clothing-based career ladder, which I, I find fascinating, but we'll, we'll talk more about that after 11. And it's Thursday, of course, so Mystery Hour is on the way as well. That, what, what, what's going on, do you think, in, in regard to the junior doctor's strike? We, we now know that this uh, latest round of industrial action is being undertaken for all the reasons that the last round was, and, and it's really confusing. I hope it sounds a little bit cocky, actually, to say if I'm confused, then I, I imagine you are as well. But all I really mean by that is that I do this for a living. So whatever you do for a living, if you're uh, dealing in stocks and shares or fixing a system today, the chances are you know more about dealing in stocks and shares and fixing systems than, than I do. So what I do for a living is... is, is work with the news every day, try and get to the bottom of the big issues, or at least try to come to a better understanding of them. And this must be the most confusing and convoluted industrial action in living memory, in terms of how it is being portrayed. Because if you just listened to doctors, right, I don't think on this programme we had anyone from the BMA. The BMA, of course, is the union, but I, I, I take the view when we're discussing these issues that the closer you can get to the shop floor, the more realistic the picture you can paint will become. So all we really did was speak to, to junior doctors when it came to expertise. Of course, punters, patients, ordinary members of the public also always welcome, but they were mostly, when critical of the junior doctors, getting their information from the newspapers. And the newspapers historically don't like trade unions unions and so they were attacking the BMA when in fact what the junior doctors told us all along was that the BMA didn't really represent their position they weren't bothered about the wages or the overtime or the money issues anywhere near as much as they were bothered about the safety issues now this is the only analysis that can make sense of the fact that the BMA then negotiated a deal with the Department of Health that it recommended to its members but its members rejected so this for me was the mists clearing moment I, I told you I possibly spent a little bit too much time thinking about these things, but it's our, it's our nation's health. I don't know that there is any more important issue on the agenda um, uh, for, uh, you know, real politics, if you like, as opposed to the pantomime politics that we're neck deep in at the moment. The, the, the only way it made sense for me was when I suddenly realised that the BMA's arguments were not the arguments being put forward by most of their membership. So that meant it became inevitable that the membership would turn down the deal negotiated by the BMA. Are you still with me at the back? It's important this. Seriously, stay awake. So, having negotiated that deal and seen its own membership rejected, the BMA are sort of left in a very strange place, but the junior doctors themselves are left in a desperately uncomfortable place where not only do they feel absolutely unable to accept the terms of the contract that Jeremy Hunt still intends to impose upon them, impose upon them, um, not only that, but also they don't really have any organised representation in the terms of a traditional trade union in the terms of the BMA, because although the BMA now still speaks for them, you know that resignations followed that rejection by the membership of the last contract. It's a horrible strike, this. It's absolutely horrible. There could be a million appointments that are postponed. There could be operations that are, well, they will be. And, and there could be deaths. There really could. At which point, presumably, the politicians start hoping that the public will turn on the doctors. You can see, can't you, the Daily Mail or the Sun front page that, that, that says blood on the hands of the junior doctors. But it's fairly hard, isn't it, to escape the conclusion that the junior doctors are seeing the strike as the lesser of two evils. They honestly believe 
that if they accept the terms of this contract and have their shifts spread across seven days at a time in the history of the health service when they don't have enough bodies to cover the five days they're currently doing, just think about that for a minute. It seems to me to be absolutely, absolutely crucial. They must believe that accepting the contract will endanger more of us, more of their patients than these strikes. If there's a doctor in the country that wants this strike to happen, I'll eat my hat. If there's a doctor in this country that is looking forward to this strike, I'll eat my hat. If there's a doctor in this country who isn't desperately, desperately hoping that Jeremy Hunt blinks and accepts that almost every single medical professional in the country probably has a slightly better understanding of the medical profession than he does, <laughs> that's what they want. That's what they all want, but don't take my word for it. I'm going to uh, hope that my phones start ringing. 0345 is the number that you need. So the lie that we were told that it was all about money has been comprehensively disproved. The journalists who told you that the junior doctors were only really lying about money were just tugging their forelocks and doing the work of the government. Um, and the privatisation issue that was raised by many people becomes even more acute, of course, with the current political climate. You, you know that it wasn't about the money now. You know that it is true when the doctors tell you that it's about patient safety. So we are left, you and I, with a very simple choice. Who do we trust? Doctors are telling us that we will be less safe under this new contract than we are now right? Almost all of them. The percentages are astonishing. I, I, I sat here and watched one particular young doctor I, I wilt visibly over the months. He went from, because he's a doctor, not a journalist, you see, so he didn't really know how it worked. He didn't realise that he could open up his newspaper in the morning and read a bare-faced lie being told about him and his colleagues. He just presumed that at some point the public would, would cotton on, that the public would just see through the mess and go, well, no, hang on a minute, why would he be going on strike? And then his friends started emigrating and junior daughters started taking up their training contracts in New Zealand and places like that. The, the numbers of people in, inquiring about going overseas went through the roof, went through the roof immediately after the health secretary announced that he was going to impose this contract. So you and me are left with a really simple choice. And it's not even a political choice. It's a simple choice of trust. Absolutely crucial to being a doctor, arguably somewhat less likely to pop up when you're dealing with a politician. The doctors of Britain believe that this contract will endanger us. Jeremy Hunt disagrees. Your question, very simply, is who to trust. 0345 6060973 is the number you need. Who are you going to trust? And I know that we now have on the march in Britain a sort of almost like a, a, a celebration of ignorant opinion, a celebration of people who almost boast about how little they know about subjects but how important their uh, opinions are. Y y we've seen it obviously with the referendum but we're seeing it now in, in areas of life that really do matter in terms of life and death. We're seeing it now in terms of, in terms of our children's medical care. The doctor that will look after your mum, the doctor that will look after you, they are almost all telling us that the new contract will make us less safe. Less safe. Less safe. Who are you going to trust? 03456060973. And that is it, actually. Because I, I kind of, we will have a bit of an argument if you trust the politician more than the doctors, but not until I've really understood why. I really want to know why you would do that. Is it just because your blinkers are glued to the side of your head in such a way that you cannot see it out of the party loyalty about this or the anti-union rhetoric that's been inflicted on this country for the best part of half a century now? You just cannot quite imagine that doctors tell the truth and politicians don't? You see where my confusion comes from? Every, almost every single doctor says we'll be less safe and in order to avoid that future, they're going to compromise our safety for five day strikes at a time. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. But we need to pick a side. 12 minutes after 10 is the time. 03456060973 is the number that you need. You can email james at lbc.co.uk. 
and you can text me on 84850. The money was never the issue. They promised us that. They swore blind it wasn't about the money. Um, they swore blind it wasn't. But the BMA consisted or, or, or continued to negotiate in a way that made it appear to us as if it was. We now know that that wasn't it because they got more money in that contract and they still rejected it. They rejected it as I understand it. And doctors, you must help me out here in case I'm misrepresenting your position. They rejected it because they just don't believe that the new contract can be satisfactorily imposed. And I believe them because they are working in hospitals every single day. I, I'm, I'm open to persuasion, of course I am, but every single day they're working in hospitals. And they say, if you take the bodies we've got now, spread across five days and spread them across seven, we will be less safe. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? They're already struggling to fill rotors on a five-day rotor. If you make that rotor seven days, they're going to struggle even more. So the likelihood of you being in a hospital that isn't properly staffed is going to be higher on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday than it is now. And then you add in a Saturday and Sunday, which will be less, well, less staffed than the weekdays currently are. Oh, man alive. 10.14 is the time. Um, you can be first, actually, if you're quick on this. 0345 606 is the number that you need. And in a sense, if it's not obvious to you what I'm saying, I really want you to tell me why. If, if you think this is about something more complicated than simply choosing who to trust, a politician or almost every doctor in the land, then tell me what it is I'm missing. This isn't left wing or right wing. This is simple humanity. Here are the people we take our babies to when they're sick. They are talking to us about patient safety. And here are the politicians who are talking to us about the imposition of contracts or whatever the phrase du jour may be. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I can't see an argument on the other side. All I see is blind loyalty, forelock tugging, and right-wing journalists doing what right-wing politicians effectively pay them to do. I, I cannot see, if you step out of the politics, how anybody could turn to the doctors and say, nah, shut up. Not having it. Suck it up. Do what you're told. Even if you think it's going to make my children less safe than they currently are. James O'Brien on LBC. Who are you going to trust? And Ghostbusters is not an acceptable answer. Junior doctors or, well, doctors in general or politicians. 0345 It's weird, you know, looking at the trust survey the other day about how little newspapers are trusted and how little politicians are trusted. And yet I, I don't recognize that. I think when people do the surveys, they say, do you trust newspapers? And then they say no. Then you ask them about something like immigration. They just repeat something they've read in the newspapers as if it's all true. You know what the Sun's done today? The Sun has uh, described how the Brexit vote has emboldened a few racist morons. This in the wake of that terrible murder in Harlow. The Sun newspaper, which immediately after the Brexit vote, of course, talked about children who can't speak English and, and cheering on the streets of Boston. It's incredible, actually, the, the, the juxtaposition of, of abject dishonesty with preaching. But what's going on with the doctors? Andrew's in Tunbridge Wells. Andrew, what would you like to say? Oh, oh good morning. I'm, I'm, I'm very torn on this, on this issue. I mean, I, I have a lot of sympathy with their point of view that if you take um, five days staffing and spread it over seven, it's just not going to work. And also, I'm absolutely, truly appalled that a junior doctor can be paid less than a, tr uh, than a um, tube driver. But on um, the other I, hand, well, I, I, that's early in their, in their career and while they're sure. still training. Mm. And, and I quite like tube drivers being able to earn decent salaries because... I, uh, mm, mm, I, I, I quite agree, but I mean, the knowledge, skills, experience and training don't exactly equate, do they? No, but by well, the time a doctor um, has yeah, finished their knowledge, skills and training, they'll be earning a lot more than a tube driver. Yeah, but on the other hand, um, the doctors are trained from the public purse. They're employed and paid out of the public purse. It costs who knows how many hundreds of thousands of pounds to train a doctor. Yes. For them, for, for them to suddenly say, I don't like what's going on, we're going to disrupt the health service and harm patients, I find appalling. Yes, I do I, as well. I, I Un think, unless I, 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 unless I, I think, it will harm patients even more for them not to do it. That's the only rationale that makes it mm. understandable, and I can't, I can't see that there is any other rationale to even, even contemplate. No. But I, I don't think they should be the people who decide to hold patients to ransom. I mean, I, in, in what would you do? Way, what would you in, do in, if you were a doctor? In the, way, in, the, in the same way that if somebody joins the armed services, they're paid out of the public purse, they're trained out of the public purse, I feel a doctor should have to sign a contract on a similar basis where they have to serve so many years um, for, the, for, the, uh, for the health service where they have to buy themselves out. Well, they do already. I mean, that's their training contract, isn't it? 
I don't know. I don't they can't, know. They can't quit in the middle of their training camp. Well, they can quit completely, I suppose. I mean, you, 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 mm. you wouldn't want to bring in a, a totalitarian regime where people weren't allowed to give up a job that they hated, would you? Well, the armed services uh, do, don't they? Pardon? The armed services do, don't they? Well, you, you can, get, you, you you can get an honourable discharge. The services, you have to buy yourself out. You, 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 you can get an honourable discharge from the army. You can, I suppose you, you could bring something similar into the, to, to, the, to the doctors, but with the army, I've always but, presumed that the reason you can't just leave is, is, is in case you're actually at war and you just suddenly change your mind about it. I don't know that doctors well, quite make I, the I, same I, comparison, I, but let's, let's, what would you do? If you were a doctor and you honestly believed that this new contract was going to make your patients less safe, moving forward. You've tried negotiation, you've tried argument, you've tried debate, you've tried everything else. What would you do? I, I honestly don't know. I don't well, that's why I'm going to keep asking you. You need to come up with an answer. Here, you've only got two choices. What I am saying, it is not for doctors to decide to not treat patients. Well, who decides that they do treat patients? What's their job? No, oh, exactly. They decide every day whether they treat or don't treat a patient. It's their job. They turn up to do it. So if you were a doctor and you believed that this contract was going to endanger your patients more than the current system, what would you do? I honestly don't know. Well, have a yeah, think. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Yeah, I, no, I, I, have, I have done. Believe me, I've given it quite a considerable amount of thought. Well, okay, well, you have to answer the question now, because these doctors don't have the luxury. The doctors don't have the luxury of sitting there saying, I don't know. They have to make a decision, so you have to make that decision now, just out of respect for them. What would you do? You believe that this new contract is going to endanger patients moving forward for generations. What would you do? Go on strike or not go on strike? Work under its terms or not work under its terms? Again, I don't know. Yes, you do. What, 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 what of course you do. What of course you do. No, 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 no. Of course you know the answer to my question. Everybody does. If you passionately believed that this new contract was going to make your job as a doctor harder and make the experience of the patient worse, you've got two choices. You either go on strike or you go and go on strike. You're fibbing, Andrew. Of course you'd go on strike. No, I'm, I, I honestly don't think I, I don't think I could. Well, thank God you're not a doctor then, because your first priority should be protecting patients' interests in every human way you can. And tragically, they've been put in a position where they believe the only way they can do that is by going on strike. And I think you would as well. And I think you know that. But I'm not going to torture you by insisting that you carry on pretending not to. Paul's in Harrow. Paul, what's going on? Hello, James. Hello. Well, I get I get most of my I don't really watch the news on the telly or anything like that because it just drives and I don't get newspapers because they drive me insane. But last night I watched the news. Yes. And I turned around. <laughs> excuse me. When it turned around and said about the, the doctors, I turned around because on the news last night I believe it said they're after more money at weekends, right? And I'm turning around to Lynn and saying, I've got to trust someone. Someone's definitely lying here, and I can't, from an individual, not work out who it is, because I want the doctors to be right, but someone's definitely lying. And if they're lying, like, I, mean, I grew up in the University College of London, yes. and there, in the 80s, you had the nurses who were told by Maggie Thatcher, sorry, if we paid you any more, we wouldn't get the right people, right? Yes. So, and I don't that, remember so that, but I'll tell you a word yeah. for it. But they did the whole, and they was complete rip off. But now it's the no, doctor's turn. But I can't. Is it money? Because if it isn't money, why is it still on the table? What do you mean? Why is it still because, on the table? Well, because even on the news last night, it turned around and said they're after more money. No, go government sources have said that the junior doctors committee was unhappy with the contract as they want to be paid a weekend hourly rate thirty percent higher than during the week. That's government sources. Yeah. yeah. But it, from my that, that's, that, that's one side. So, so here's what you do, Paul. I think this is what you do. Just ignore both sides, okay? It's a shame that the, B, the... Ignore the BMA, ignore the Department of Health, find a doctor and talk to them. Yeah, well... Yeah, then I'll find a politician to talk to them. That, that, well, why would you listen to a politician about medical matters? Because there actually is, the gentleman said before, if nothing else, if nothing else I agreed with him on, he said one thing, and that is the, the public purse. You know, they're paid by the public purse. Yes. But within that, I do understand. It. I, I'm just completely... I know what I want to do. It's just, is it right? Because I can't... I'm still... I'm still trying to believe, right? And I'm completely the mo most... Probably the most naivest bloke on the planet. I'm still trying to believe that politicians don't lie in the way they appear to be doing on this. Oh, come off it. Because... Well, they, I know, I know. I know, I know. It's, I know but all I want, I want to believe in that. Do you know what I mean? I know everything... Yeah, I do. I do know I what, know actually. I know, I, know, I know exactly what you mean. You want to I'm live in a world where you friends. can trust someone. Yeah, I'm going to get all my friends coming on the phone after I've been in here and say, are you some sort of lunatic? Because they all lie. 
But I just want to be in a position where, you know, but, 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 treat, but why would the doctors people. lie to you? Yeah, but we've got to turn out to get judged. Policemen are good, doctors are good, politicians don't lie. But that's true. And uh, no, you're right. I said, it's, 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 it's an unfortunate position we found ourselves in. There are a lot of very honest politicians, a lot of very decent politicians. I'm not quite sure how high up the greasy pole they can generally clamber, but actually the best politicians don't particularly want to. I, I, in a way, I'll do what I did with the last fella and ask you what you would do if you were a doctor and you honestly believed that the new contract was going to make life worse for patients. What would you do? Go on strike? Straight forward. Screw that. I would go on strike. Of course you would. Everybody would. I don't understand people who either say, oh, I don't know, or pretend that they wouldn't. It's, it's, it's obvious. The, the, the strike, the actual the time but a strike isn't what I'm going on about, right? It's all about which one, yeah, they can get their way by striking. They could be wrong or right it, because they're actually putting a hammer on someone, right? Yeah, yeah no, of course, all industrial action has that tension, doesn't it? Yeah, but what I want to know is whoever's lying needs to be done. No, well, don't, 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 don't even think about the money. Just think about the patient safety issue, because I, I couldn't believe the way this debate unfolded. I, I, you know, I hear other, other programs covering it on, on other radio stations. I watch the same news channels that you, you watched last night. I read, I read all the newspapers every single day, except The Guardian, actually. I keep trying to read The Guardian, but I can't... I, no, hang on a minute. And, and, and oh, what I didn't understand was, was this very simple point. Why is the debate being framed in a way that makes this about money, where every single doctor I've spoken to, and I have spoken to hundreds... Tell me it's about patient safety. Because there'll be, well, what you do above all else is you actually, you actually try and get the right thing out. God bless you. I didn't know which way you were going then, Paul. I didn't know if you were going, I didn't know if you were coming in with a little uppercut or whether you were giving me a bunch of flowers. <laughs> Even if it's detrimental to you, you actually try and come out and you say, look, this is what it is. Yes. Right? And that's why I listen to your radio show. But within that, the government, yeah, I'm, I would treat them i want to believe in the doctors i want to yeah i want to believe but in you've them. got all these really loud voices shouting at you telling you not to and they have the biggest platforms and the biggest pulpits in britain you've got the daily mail you've got the sun but you know rupert murdoch's relationship with trade unions is a matter of record but most people buying his newspaper reading about trade unions probably don't realize why he despises them um the point i would make to you and thank you for the kind words is is, is very simply why would the doctors lie and, and if the answer you've got is the one that the media is giving you, or because they want more money, then you have to really ask yourself whether you truly believe that. And, and for the record, I don't, okay? It doesn't mean I'm right, it just means I'm honest. I just don't believe it. I, I, and I've spoken to hundreds. They say in this studio, why everyone else doesn't do what we do on this issue, I couldn't tell you. Don't, don't invite the BMA on, don't invite the politicians on, just get doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor. Ask them what they think. And then expand it to their colleagues, to the nurses, to the support staff, to the people that actually run the hospitals. The number you need to join in is 03456060973. I just want to clarify something Andrew in Tunbridge Wells said as well. You don't, you can't buy yourself out of the armed forces. You, you have to sign a document that you give 12 months notice um, in order to leave. You can't leave without giving 12 months notice. There's, I've never heard of this buy yourself out nonsense and I am behind the junior doctors. That from a soldier. It's half past ten. James O'Brien on LBC. 10.33. Playing the devil's advocate, James, could you find a junior doctor who doesn't believe that the new contract would impact upon patient safety? Darren, your wish is my command. I, I, the phone, I'll, I'll keep one phone line free for precisely that. It doesn't even have to be a, a, a junior doctor. Um, it could be a fully qualified one, although junior doctor itself is a bit of a misnomer because it conjures up in our eyes an image of Doogie Howser. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? Think junior, junior doctors can easily be in their 40s. They're just, you know, they're training. They haven't completed their specialties yet. It's just, I think, even that added to the rhetoric. But the simple enough question is this. Why wouldn't you believe them? When they say, we are going on strike, we are deliberately endangering patient safety because if we don't, we think patient safety will be endangered even more. That's the logic. That's all it's about. Uh, anyone else telling you it's about money or telling you about this, they're lying to you. It, it is doctors who believe the new contract will, will endanger us. Why wouldn't you believe them or trust them? I suppose one answer to that is because you think they're wrong, in which case tell me why. Kishan is in Lincoln. Kishan, what would you like to say? Morning, James. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much for having me on. I think you said something which was music to my ears in terms of said, don't talk, to, don't listen to the BMA and don't talk to the Department of Health, just chat to a doctor. Um, when I work in A&E, I see patients coming in all the time and they don't know what's going on because no. there's so much misinformation from both sides, but they still trust doctors more than politicians and they just want to talk to doctors about it. Uh, one slightly concerning point is some, some trust 
don't really want doctors talking to uh, patients at all. It's political. You mustn't talk about that. Don't involve your patients. Of course, we're going to involve our patients. Um, and we're getting thousands of doctors that have seen, quite frankly, some of the ways that this has been handled by the BMA has been suboptimal. <laughs> um, suboptimal? <and> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Certainly, I mean, the leader, Dr. Johan Malawana, going out saying, yes, he, he thinks this is a great contract, sign it. And then there was a lot of um, prominent media junior doctors kind of pushing people to say yes and mm. sign the contract, scaremongering, this is the best you're going to get, or who knows. Well, that, that might be right, though. That might not be scaremongering. They, they might be. They might be right. But I think the situation was that, you know, we've got this situation where patient safety is going to be jeopardised. Why? Tell people why. Not. Tell you, you heard Paul. Paul sums up a lot of people's position at the moment. Oh. Is he's, he's, he's swimming in a sea of lies and misinformation and he wants to be able to trust people. Why, why are you... Why? Why, so, why will patient safety be affected? Okay, so basically Jeremy Hunt and the Department of Health have said that they want a truly seven-day NHS, which anybody, any of your listeners will know, if they're sick, if they're unwell... They can go to a hospital 24 hours a day and get emergency care. Of course. What the seven-day NHS they're actually talking about is getting elective services that would be very profitable to private companies run at weekends. There was one article that Jeremy Hunt came out and said, well, actually, I don't even know if um, on Sundays there's going to be that much take-up for this elective service from GPs and from other people. So they're basically trying to spread five days' worth of staff across seven days' worth of of delivering a service and doctors are saying well hold on a minute this is not safe this is going to be there's going to be problems with that and and how accurate is it to say that the the, the current rotors are already stretched that running a five-day oh. operation is already a, a close to breaking point oh absolutely i mean if you have six doctors and you're three doctors down it just means the three doctors that are left have to work double as hard and and, and carry on the work that their that their colleagues would do otherwise so yeah there's lots of rotor gaps there are lots of problems with staffing, not just doctors, for nurses. And the other thing that's concerning is I have a lot of European nursing colleagues that are, that are absolutely petrified that they're about to be kicked out of the country as a result of this Brexit vote. And let's not forget, this is something that's happened already because I think it was when Theresa May was Home Secretary, she changed the Tier 2 visa restrictions for Indian doctors and said that they needed to have something like, I don't know, 35 or 40 grand in a bank account to, for them to be allowed to stay. So that the whole NHS is at breaking point, and this is the final. This is the straw that's going to break the camel's back. And and then, so my analysis that you are endangering patients by going on strike because you honestly believe that by not going on strike and accepting this contract, you would endanger them even more for, in, well, ad infinitum forever. Spot on. And I think really? if you have a situation where the NHS, looking at the moment, the NHS is the most efficient system in the world. Um, I was in uh, Cardiff interviewing Professor Sir Mansell Aylward, who's the chair of the Bevan Commission, because we're making a documentary about the NHS. And, you know, he's saying that in Cardiff, they put this contract in via, you know, discussion and talking to the doctors, talking to the patients, talking to the BMA, and they don't have this abrasive factor, which unfortunately yes, is Jeremy yes. Hunt. Um, you've seen him on Sky this morning, you've seen him on BBC. He's got a couple of dodgy tells in terms of if he was playing poker, I think a lot of doctors have worked out how to beat his hand because he looks to the side. He's not, he's, you can tell he's not being honest. He's off, when he's kind of pushed off script by uh, Eamon Holmes um, and the various other people that are interviewing him, I think people are coming to see that this is just an absolute sham and it's, People are sick of platitudes and sound bites from politicians, and they actually well, want... No, well, you say no. that. They, and some people are sick of platitudes and sound bites from politicians. Some people are swallowing them for breakfast every day. It just, it just depends whether they like the, 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 whether the platitudes and sound bites endorse their own prejudices. But I, I think you're right. Intelligent well, thinking people should be running out of patience with platitudes and sound bites. I can ask you a, I, I don't know if this is a personal question or a professional one. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to look at my bunions or anything like that. I, I just, <laughs> I, 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 the, the story that came out uh, earlier this month about NHS investigation, a department, sorry, not NHS, a Department of Health, an internal confidential yeah. Department of Health inquiry into whether this was workable, yeah. and it concluded th this, yeah, this was undertaken specifically for Jeremy Hunt and other ministers in late July, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was done by senior civil servants, undertaking uh, a proper analysis of that totemic pledge in the manifesto to provide yeah. seven-day service, and it concluded that there is too few staff and too little money. So, as a doctor who deals in diagnostic techniques and deals in, 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 in facts, generally, when you 
encounter this? What, 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 how do you, I mean, how, how, cause I'm a journalist, I deal with this every day. It's the opposite of medicine, this. This is, this is conclusive proof it's, that the Department of Health like has it. found it to be unworkable, and yet the Secretary of State for Health is going around the studios this morning saying that it's great. How do you process I mean, that as a doctor? I, I mean, I can tell you exactly how I process it, and on my Twitter account, um, I'm not sure if I can give it out. Yeah, account. go on, why not? <laughs> uh, at Dr. Kish and Reese. There you go, if you've got any problems with your bunions, yeah, get in touch R with R Kish and yeah. at, at Dr. Yeah, Kish and Reese, R w Yes, go on. In the pinned tweet is exactly how I responded to that. And the funny thing is, is I put that out half an hour before Channel 4 broke their story about seven-day scam and seven-day cover-up. It's, you know, doctors, as doctors, we've been politically not necessarily very involved. And we've been, we've stood back and thought, let the politicians, let yes. them be able to do this. Because that's their job, they're the professionals. But when you repeatedly see people lying, and even now this morning on BBC, he's saying, yeah, this, this document that I've put out, you know, I'd, I've asked my officials to, to look at the risks and I'd want them to look at the risks, as of any government policy. They didn't do that with Brexit, though, did they? Um, so they come out and they say that um, they come out and say that they're doing this. And at the end of the day, that was that was taken off the front page by a ridiculous story like Richard Branson leaking some CCTV footage, which, which frankly, uh, everybody. <laughs> Covering, it's even so now you brought Corbyn into it. Brexit, Corbyn. Uh, this is fantastic. You're going for the for the bingo right. card of news. But 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 the the other side of my question, the reason I was a little reluctant to ask it, and you may not want to answer. No no no. Is Here is the go. patients? These are the people you treat, and and the idea that they can be, and, and I don't know. We need to find a new language to describe people who like being ignorant. So I mean, they're, they're running the world at the moment. They choose <laughs> they choose to look at a story, or maybe they're just not aware of it, but let's focus on the people who are. They know that the Department of Health has drawn up its own research into this proposal that says we haven't got the bodies or the money, and yet they're still siding with the Secretary of State who says we need to do it. Well, what, what do you think, think of them? Blame them? I don't think you can blame them, okay, because we, uh, up until November 2015, I was media naive, and I believed yeah. everything that they said in the papers, and it's only when you see somebody lying about something that you're an expert uh, in, and I was Claim myself to be an expert, but I work in health. I work in uh, you know healthcare day in day out, and then when you start seeing people saying, "Oh well, you know uh, weekend mortality," and you actually look at the papers and you realise, well, that's not they're, they're defining a weekend as Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, it'd be very, it'd be remiss of me to kind of blame them. And I think what we must do is we must chat to them, we must get involved. That's why your point that you said, don't listen to the BMA, don't listen to the Department of Health, just chat to the doctor. There's 60,000 of us who are all fairly eloquent and we'll kind of discuss with people. Any questions you want to ask, we'll answer. We'll go, we've started doing a series of live... Not, not, not during surgery, I, I just want to stress, the GPs are overworked no, enough without no, 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 people no, turning up for a political chat at surgery tomorrow. No, 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 not during surgery, of course. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we've gone into medicine because we... Um, love caring for people. We, you know, if, if these are the brightest kids in the year. If they wanted to go off and make money, they would go off and be lawyers or bankers or, you know, whatever. So to say it's about money, it's, it's not about money. And just quickly, I mean, an interesting thing that you might like to hear about the BMA yes. is obviously I set up a little kind of media, social media broadcaster, and I advised them at the roadshow that they did. They said that all oh, this WhatsApp leak. Um, you know, we've decided not to disclose this WhatsApp leak. So Sean Linton at the Health Service Journal has around a thousand pages of WhatsApp leak. Mm. Who, who has leaked this? We're completely unsure, okay? Mm. And I advised them, and I said to the BMA, I said, look, there's this WhatsApp leak. You've, you've got it, they've got it. They can release it whenever you want. Why don't you just release it? Why don't you just get ahead of the news curve and say, this is what's happened? And they said, do you want to know what the answer was to me? Go on. The answer was, the BMA has undergone a lot of hurt at the moment, and we need to undergo a process of healing. And I said to them, I'm sorry, this is about the NHS, this is about the healthcare of our patients. I pay 30 quid a month for this organisation, and I think I can put out content that's better kind of suited for the public. And they're more concerned about their reputation about this WhatsApp leak than they are about fighting for a health service. And I'm sorry, that's fr frankly, from my point of view, that's wrong. Well, I, I don't imagine anyone will disagree with you, and I, I like your analysis of, of, of what we have to, for the time being, call the willfully, the delightedly ignorant. And you just say, well, I was a doctor, I always presumed that there was a modicum of truth in the newspapers, until it actually became the field, the issue that I know so much about. Just give us that Twitter handle again, Kishan, because I suspect you've, you've um, won a lot of friends. Uh, yeah, at Dr. 
that's a D-R-K-I-S-H-A-N and then Reese, R-W-S, all one word, lowercase. Anyone wants to get in touch, I'm more than half happy to chat to them. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, James. Right, well, also, right. your support for the junior doctors throughout this has been brilliant. I mean, I've seen Ben in the studio and Nadia and Lolly, um, and we couldn't do it without you. The tide is turning. So thank well, you I, so I hope we the really tide is turning, it. and I really, really hope, as you do, and as all of the doctors you've mentioned do, that the, the, the tide turns before you have to go on this latest round of industrial action. So why would you not believe him? You believe him when he tells you that you're poorly, but you won't believe him when he tells you that the working conditions that are about to be imposed upon him will make us all less safe. Leading Britain's conversation, LBC, with James O'Brien. 49 already. 03456060973 is the number you need. This this um, uh, scoop here from last week, for me, it, it just sums up the entire junior doctor's uh, conflict. The health service has too few staff and too little money to deliver the government's promised seven-day NHS on time, and patients may not notice any difference, even if it happens, according to the Department of Health's own leaked documents. Too few staff and too little money to make it happen. And, and there's the end of the argument, surely. But no, apparently not, because there are now a significant number of people in this country who have turned off their brains and will do whatever the right-wing media tells them to. And that's really, really scary. It's not that scary in the context of um, some pantomime politics. God knows what our departure from the European Union is going to look like, but it's unlikely to involve actual life and death on the scale that NHS policy does. This is life and death. And the Department of Health's own leaked documents show that it can't work, which is what the junior doctors have been saying all along. So how can anybody, apart from sort of almost as if you've taken forelock tugging to a fetishistic level, these people who are usually losing life but are convinced that they're on the same side as the winners, they seem to dominate British politics and American politics, if you look at Donald Trump at the moment. People who, who don't really care what these people say as long as they just see, somehow endorse the sense that people like me, people like me are winning. We should be doing better. Down with people not like me. And somehow, in the last couple of years in this country, they, they've, they've, they've become like a sort of a, an amorphous blob of powerful idiocy where right-wing media says jump and they just scream at the top of their voices how high and anyone who doesn't jump deserves to be denigrated in the foulest and most violent of terms right-wing media says jump you say how high there's a bloke over there not jumping let's get him that's where we are now that's what we've become daily mail rupert murdoch say jump just half the country is it shouts how high how high and then they sort of fill the rest of the day beating up on anyone who hasn't jumped and that's where i see with the junior daughter stripe sorry if you find that offensive but if you've got a better explanation of why you would not believe the department of health's own research and not believe every doctor in the country then i need to hear it helen's in kingsbury helen what have you what would you like to say hello hello, um, hello um first of all i'm not a doctor uh, but I've worked in the NHS for over 40 years. Um, Dr. Rees has said very eloquently everything, more or less, that I wanted to say. The, the contract is absolutely unsafe because, as he mentioned, and as we all know, if you haven't got the staff to man a five-day service properly, which is what's happening at the moment, how can you stretch to seven days without any resources put in you know, already, there are, I mean, beds have been cut in the NHS for years and years and years, as far as I can remember. Population is growing. There's no money going into the NHS, and whatever's going in is not managed properly. The more, you know, managers than workers in the NHS, we haven't got enough doctors, we haven't got enough nurses. The nurses' bursary has gone, the student nurses' bursary are about to go. And how do we man a seven-day service properly without staff? I, I, it's just a whole baffling thing. And yet the government had a, has put a spin on 
doctor space, not about doctor space, about patient safety. Which is what and the doctors say. This is where Kishan was so I impressive, know, isn't I it, in saying don't listen to the BMA, because the BMA apparently were fighting the battle more on money than the doctors, which is where my confusion first came in, Helen, because I had them all sitting in here. None of them mentioned money, and I thought, well, they, either they're all lying to me, yes. or the BMA <laughs> is not properly representing the interests of its members. So when that, those emails came out show, showing the obsession with pay from the BMA, the doctors were even angrier than the than their enemies. The doctors were even angrier that the debate had moved into that zone because that's not why they're going on strike. Absolutely right, Jane. And you are about the only person that I hear from the media shouting about the doctors, with the doctors. It is not about pay because, you know, doctors' pay is not enormous in any sense. If you compare them to, you know, to the years of training, what they have to go through, and they're still junior doctors until they become consultants. That's an, another thing people don't get into their head. They think that they come out of uni and they're junior doctors, and that's, that's who we are talking about. We're not. There, there are people who are in 15, 18 years in training, yes. you know, before they become a consultant. So these people have families, they have mortgages, they have everything. And it's not about pay. Still, it's not about pay. The NHS is unsafe as it is because we haven't got enough nurses and doctors and ancillary staff and physios and, you know... And a lot of the ones we have got are terrified about what their future might involve, as, as, as Dr. Rees reminded us. But, of course, when you, when you made those arguments a few months ago, you, you got shouted down by the same people, presumably, who will shout down or try to say... The shout, try to shout down the doctors today. What would you do then, Helen? What would you do? Do you know, I, uh, Jeremy Hunt wants to go back to the table. Now, what, that, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, talk to the doctors. Jeremy Hunt, during all that fiasco, didn't even, you know, say hello to the doctors when he, when he was seen walking up in Whitehall. And mm. two doctors, I remember, wanted to talk to him. He will not talk to them. He needs, he needs to go on the shop floor and talk to the doctors. What is it all about? He knows exactly what it's all about. That's my, my thing, you know. Well, I, I, and then you're left with the mystery and you, you, you have to fill in the gaps for yourself in the absence of any other explanations. And, and, and normally, you know, it's a little bit shrill when people start screaming privatisation and profiteering and big business. But you look at the cheerleaders for the anti-doctor movement, and you can be fairly confident that they will have fingers in privatised healthcare pies that, that the rest of us aren't even aware exist yet. And, and I know that can sound a little bit conspiratorial, but when you look at the country at the moment, do you, do you not think it's highly likely that perhaps strings are being pulled by extremely powerful people who are making us act against our own interests in order to make them even more rich and powerful? I know, I know, I know, it sounds quasi-Marxist, but hey. Helen, thank you. Dave is in Bromley. Dave, what would you like to say? Uh, yeah, I don't agree with it. Um, they should just get on with the job that they signed up to do. That, that, that's what they want to do, Dave. They're making them sign well, up for a different job now. I completely well, agree with you. They should just get up. That's be... what all the doctors want, to get on with the job that they yeah. signed up to do, Dave. Yeah, but they're not, they're, they're not going to be working seven days a week. They're only going to be working five days a well, week. Well, hang on. Do you, want them to, do, you want, do you want them to do the job they signed up to do or not? So to me, it's all about semantics because, you know, oh, we want our weekends off. No, you well, just said you, know, you came on the radio and you said you want them to do the job that they signed up to do, which is what they want. So either you yeah, either you made a mistake yeah, then, be a, be a doctor. or you didn't no. mean it. No, I did mean it. Right. But you, you've got to move with the times. I mean, the doctors doc, doctors and nurses no different from any other public, um, so, uh, public sector, public service oh. worker. Okay, okay. Na but name another one that involves 18 years of training. Uh, hang on, uh, you, you're talking about police officers? Yeah, 18 years of training? Um, ambulance drivers? 18 years of officers. training? Okay, 10 years of it's training. Relevant about the tra it's, it's, about, it's irrelevant about training. This is what they've chosen. No, but you just do. said they were exactly it's, the it's, same. It's, you've, it's, said, you've said two things to me. You've said they should do the job that they've signed up to do, and they're exactly the same as all other public sector workers. Now, you didn't obviously realise what you were saying when you said they should do the job that they've signed up to do, because that's why they're on strike. They want to do the job that they've signed up to do, Dave. But you, you said in the opening comment that you were against the strike. So, at the moment, you're both in favour of it and against it, and you're claiming that 18 years of training to be a oh, I don't know, a, 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 a surgeon, is the same as signing up to be a police officer and being out on the beat within months of signing on the dotted line. I, I don't want to sound rude, mate, but you haven't really thought this through, have you? Yes, I have. 
Well, that's even worse. 10.58 is the time. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Peter is in Clapham. Peter, they should just get on with the job that they've signed up to do. That's what they want. Oh, I'm still against them. I want to end on a slightly more intelligent note, and it's down to you to provide it. OK, I'll do my best. I um, couldn't disagree more with the, the last gentleman. Who he disagreed with himself, it. Peter, to be fair. Well, that mean I'm disagreeing with his disagreement? You're disagreeing with him disagreeing with himself? <laughs> well, in that case, I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> he agreed with himself as well at the end. And that's that, I mean, I know we laugh and we're being a bit rude, but that's the argument there in a nutshell. Uh, that is the people well, who've been persuaded that the doctors are wrong. Yeah, well, the, the, uh, the doctors um, have uh, saved my wife's life. I trust them completely. And I wouldn't have a bad word said against any of them. I would rather believe them than any politician, to be perfectly frank, and they have my full support. And there it is, uh, the voice of a normal patient. And, of course, I will allow bad words to be said about doctors. Some doctors do bad things, uh, not, not the obvious evil of someone like Harold Shipman, but the, but the rank incompetence of some people in every profession needs to be recognised. But I guess Dave sums it all up. I, I, I think they should get on with the job they've signed up to do.